God be praised. Good morning to you. Historic 9th Street Missionary Baptist Church right here in the very city of Fort Smith, Arkansas. We welcome you to this historic place known as 9th Street. Amen. 1023 North 9th Street right here once again in the very city of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Listen, I want to welcome everybody that's in the sanctuary. It is good to see all of you, the outlets, Sister Lucy, Greg. It's good to see Reverend, Reverend Sharp. It's good to see Sister Scott. Amen. Sister Laurie Ann. Amen. Kenya, it's good to see you. Amen. It is just good to be in the house of worship one more time amen amen brother john it's good to see you amen it is good just to be here in the land of the living amen aren't you glad to be alive amen that that sound really weak I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just glad to be alive and know that I am alive. I'm glad that I got my health, my strength. I'm glad that I got, a, I, got the, I got a sound mind. I got eyes to see. I got legs to walk. I got a mouth to talk. You ought to be just excited that you are still yet alive and know that you are alive. Matter of fact, is there anybody online this morning that just say that I'm just glad to be alive? Matter of fact, y'all need to go ahead and type in online, I'm glad to be alive. Amen. And while you're writing that in this morning, go ahead and just share this live, this live feed this morning. Somebody needs the word of God besides you this morning. Go ahead and like it. Go ahead and share it. Amen. Because somebody needs the word of God besides you. This is your way of evangelism. This is your way of discipleship this morning by sharing the live. And God is going to test you this morning to see if you're doing what I've asked you to do. Just share it. If you got a Facebook page, share it. Somebody needs this word this morning. I've been, I've been studying all week long to get to this place right here. Amen. And I don't want this word to go on, on deaf ears. Amen. Listen, let me give you our scripture of the month. It comes from James 1 and 5. Everybody say James 1 and 5. Amen. This is our last time in reading this for the, for the month. And hopefully this soaks into your spirit. This is another scripture that you are able to put in your, in your holster, amen, and utilize it for your own, personal, your own personal good. James 1 and 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Let me say this again. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously. Meaning he ain't looking for nothing in return. He's just giving it to you. Amen. To all without finding fault. He said he ain't even find no fault in you. He's just going to still give it to you regardless of who you are, regardless of what you've done, he says, I'm going to still bless you anyway. But watch this. He goes on to say, and it will be given to you. Amen. May God be a blessing to the reading and the hearers of God's holy and righteous word. Listen, if you desire a special prayer this morning, if you desire a special prayer, I'm not asking you to come to the altar, but if you feel so led to come to this altar, you can come down at any point in time. Amen. Even online, you can go ahead and put in your prayer request. Amen. I'm praying for you online. Amen. If you want to come to this altar, you can. Amen. But if not, you can just open your arms real wide, real big, and God is going to hear you right where you stand. Amen. Amen.
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we thank you for this day, our daily bread. Most gracious God, our Father, here we are once again, just a few of your humble servants down here at 9th Street. And God, we are standing before you some come with heavy hearts. Some would come with burden down, God. Some come on tip-top anticipation, expecting a word that would lift up their spirits. And God, we are standing, God, right in your very midst this morning. We're standing as a family, as a unit, desiring to hear from our Father. Now, God, since you are our Father, since you are our great big God, we are expecting you to do something marvelous on this day. We are expecting you to do something grand on this day. And God, that's to give us an encouraging word. Something that can hold us. Something that can sustain us throughout the course of this week. And weeks to come. And God, we come this morning, God. Sitting around your table. Because God, we know that around your table. There's always something good that's always prepared for us. And God, I don't know what your people stand in need of this morning. But God, all of us are standing in need of prayer. I can surely say it's not my mother. It's not my father. It's not my sister or my brother. But God, it's me. It's Cedric L. Carter, God, that's standing in need of prayer. Now God, hear my prayer this morning. Hear my call this morning. Hold my hand, Lord. God, I stand as a mediator, God, between you and your people. And I'm asking now is that you even begin blessing them right where they stand, God. Those who have their hands wide open, God, they're expecting something marvelous, something big, something gigantic from you. And God, I don't know if it's just a happy face, God. I don't know if it's just joy this morning. I don't know if it's just peace this morning. But whatever they stand in need of, God, I know that you have the capability of blessing like none other. And God, somebody this morning, God, have been burdened down, God. Somebody have been pressed, depressed all week, God. Somebody's mind, God, has been wondering all week long, God. And I'm asking on this day is that you would grant them freedom. Freedom in their mind, God. Give them freedom in their heart, God. God, give them their joy back. Give them their strength back. God, give them a sense of relief this morning, God, knowing that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And God, we're expecting the gift, God, of your son this morning. We thank you for your son, Jesus, God, the one that suffered, bled, and died for the sins of the world. We tell you thank you, God. We tell you thank you for his blood-stained banner, God. We Thank you for Jesus, God, for his help, God, in a time of storm, in a time of trouble, God. God, we are standing, God, because of Jesus, God. We're standing this morning because of your only begotten son, the one who sits high right beside you and looks down low, God. We stand, God, because of our father, because he's been a good, good father. We stand this morning, God, because you've been a mother, God. We stand because you've been a father.
brother to us. We stand because you've been a brother and a sister to us, God. God, we thank you for your angels, God. We thank you for your angels for covering us and keeping us all night long while we slumbered and slept, God. Tossed and turned, God. It was your angels that kept us, God. And for that, we are so grateful this morning. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful for the things that you have done. And Lord knows what you are about to do. It is in Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said together, amen and thank God. Come on, can you give God a great hand clap of praise all over this room, all over this building? Come on, give God your very best praise this morning. Amen. He deserves. Come on, he deserves. Tell somebody, say God deserves. Come on, say God deserves. Come on, I'm going to keep pressing on you. God deserves. He deserves your best praise. Come on. I need to hear you this morning. God deserves. He deserves your very best praise. Matter of fact, he, he deserves your very best worship. Oh. 
my friend. Amen. Come on, you can stand. can say that today you Lord can we say it all over this building thank you Lord come on you can get louder than that amen mm. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you. God, we thank you for another day, another opportunity to stand before your people, God, with encouraging words. Now, God, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable into thine sight. My God, my source of strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Y'all lucky I don't have a voice like Michael Jackson. Because I would be up here just turning it out. Amen. Y'all lucky. Amen. Every Sunday, y'all will hear my voice. I just come in a sanctuary just singing. Because I got a nice voice. Amen. God bless y'all today. Amen. Amen. If y'all don't mind turning with me this morning to Mark. Mark. Five. Our message for this morning comes from Mark, Mark 5, 25 through 34. Somebody say, I got it. Mark 5, 25 through 34. Amen. If you don't mind standing, if you can, for the reading of God's holy word, I want y'all to get all of this. And I'm going to, I, I got to read it all because there's some things that stand out. I know you've heard this, but I got to let you hear it today. I got 30 minutes, and I'm on the clock right now. And a woman was there who had been subject 
to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal. Richard, the sound sounds good. Under the care of many doctors. Everybody say many doctors. And had spent all she had. Say she spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought if I just touch his clothes I will be healed verse 29 says immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? Yeah, you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking. <laughs> around to see who had done it then the woman knowing what had happened to her came and fell at his feet trembling with fear y'all all say this at the same time told him the whole truth say told him the whole truth he said to her daughter your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Just for a little while, I want to preach from the subject title, Bleeding, Broke, But Still Believing. Bleeding, Broke, But Still Believing. Amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. We, we all, Alicia, have issues. Some of us have big issues. Others have small issues. But it can be certain that we all have some issues some of us have come to realize that we have issues while others of us are still trying to figure out what's wrong with everyone else in the world issues Physical issues, spiritual issues, emotional issues, financial issues, relational. All of us have some. I ain't the only one. The incident this morning occurred while Jesus was traveling to Jairus' house. A large crowd, according to Mark, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 long years. And she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she, she had. Yet instead of getting better, she was growing worse. 
So before Jesus could get through the crowd, he feels power flowing out of his very own body. And this woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years touches his robe and God heals her. That's the story. Now let me tell you what the Lord wants to say to us on this day. I need to tell you my thematic thrust of today's message is very short, sweet, and to the point. If you don't get anything else out of this message, you need to get this right here. Keep believing in the capability of God. Pause. Take it in. Get some wind. Suck up some oxygen. Keep believing in the capability of God. I need you to text this. I need you to tweet this. Put it out in the atmosphere right now because somebody needs to hear. Keep believing in the capability of God. I know you believe in the capability of your spouse, your loved one, your mother and your father, your sister and your brother, your supervisor. All of those folks are good. But I need you to believe in the capability of God. Here's point number one. And all these points are going to point back at the dramatic thrust. Remember, keep believing in the capability of God. If you are going to believe in the capability of God, you, you cannot allow your situation to get worse at the hands of others. Can I say it again? Don't allow your situation to get worse at the hands of others. Here, in verse 25, this certain woman has a certain issue. We don't know this woman's name. We don't know if she's married. We don't know if she has a husband, children. We don't know if her mother and father still living. We don't know too much about this lady. All we know is that in this text, her name is woman, but then this woman has some issues. This is not your normal, ignorable issue either. Sometimes we can have issues that are insignificant enough that if we don't bother them, then they won't bother us. However, this was not that type of issue. Somebody say, this ain't that type of issue. Dealing with blood was tedious and time-taking. It restricted her travel. She was in no way able to live life to its fullest because she was limited by the nasty issue that she was forced to bear. She can't get on no plane, can't get on no bus, can't get in a car, can't ride for long because she got issues. The issue had been with the woman for quite some time now. And she had been dealing with this issue for 12 years. Somebody say 12 years is a long time. When a person deals with something that long they can get the idea that they would rather go ahead and live with the issue than continue to search and spend on ways to solve the problem. She, she got issues. The Bible, the Bible says 
that she had spent all that she had. She had gone from doctor. Hold on. She, she had gone to the doctor several times. And matter of fact, she went to several different doctors. Has anybody in this room ever gone to several different doctors? And every doctor is giving you a different report? Have you ever had to go to several different doctors? What this, what this tells me, Pat, is that no one had the cure. No one had the remedy. No one had the antidote. Nor did they have the right medication. This, this pushes her to try doctor after doctor. When one doctor can't tell you what's wrong, when another doctor can't tell you what it is that's going on on the inside of you, this lady literally has to go from doctor to doctor and doctor to doctor for 12 long years. You, how do you think this woman feels? I can only imagine how she feels. I can only imagine what she's saying. I can only imagine what she's going through. She says, I've gone to doctor after doctor, still no results, still no answer, still no cure, still no healing. She says, I'm tired of taking all of your tests, your blood count test, your genetic test, your kidney test, your laboratory test, your prenatal test, your thyroid test. I'm tired of taking your, your analysis. She says, I'm just, I'm just tired. Watch, watch the text. In verse 26, verse 26 of this text says, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. When you are under the care of so many, they will cause you to be discombobulated. They will cause you to be confused. They will cause you to be angry. They will cause you to be upset. They will cause you to be wondering, why are you not getting better, but you're getting, you're getting worse? Says, I tried all y'all different remedies. And ain't none of them working. Y'all done gave me all this medication. You done sent me to every pharmaceutical company there is. And there's still no cure. There's still no help for me. So every time they give you a new remedy, you're coming out of your pocket. And causing yourself to decline in health and in your finances. This woman has issues. Her issues are not just health related, but they're also financial issues. One problem after the next. Every time I look around, it's always something. I thought I was going to Dr. Johnny. He was going to have what I need. I thought I was going to go and see Sister Lucy, Dr. Lucy, and she was going to have what I need, but all she did was gave me another prescription, and I find myself now, I'm out of my, I'm broke, busted, and Lord have mercy, I'm disgusted. She She's, she has some issues. 
Watch this. Here's the second point for you. This is verse 27 through 29. Don't be afraid to go after what you desire. Don't be afraid to go after what you desire. First of all, we don't really know if she knew who Jesus was. I'm going to say this again because y'all ain't got it. Look at verse 27. We don't know. We don't really know if she knew who Jesus was. Somebody saying in their head right now, Reverend Carter, why would you say a thing like that? Let me prove it to you. The text says in verse 27, when she heard about Jesus. Let me stop and pause and let y'all soak it in. When she heard about Jesus. It leads us to believe that she knew nothing but because she saw a crowd around. Y'all heard that saying before. If you're in Rome, do as the Romans do. Come here, John. Come here. Come here. Come here, Junior. Come here, Pat. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Come on up. Come on up. Don't be afraid. He ain't going to call you to preach today. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on around me. Come on around. Come on around. <laughs> Pat said that's what they told him, too. And look where he is now. Amen. We said, if you was in Rome, act like the Romans. She said, that, uh, there's a crowd of people that's standing around her. That's around, that, that's making up a crowd. And could it be that someone in the crowd said, I know this man and I know his capability. Come on, come on around, come on around, make a, make a circle right here. Come on, make a circle right here. She's in the crowd. She knows nothing to my mind, to, to my knowledge of Jesus Christ. But she hears. She hears somebody in the crowd saying, I've heard about this man. You ought to get to know this man named Je I heard that he healed the sick. I heard that he raised the dead. I heard that he took 5,000 uh, with two fish and five barley, loaves of bread. I heard that he turned water into... She said, there's something going on in the crowd. Can I tell y'all this? When you have somebody in your crowd who know or who knows who he is, you won't be afraid to get close to him. I'm glad that Junior knows something about him. I'm glad that Pat knows something about him. I'm glad that John knows something about him because, because I'm in the crowd, because I'm in the know, because I'm in their midst, I can find out a little bit more about who he is. And that ought to be somebody's shout on today. The reason why I'm in church today is because somebody in the... It was somebody in the nightclub that was talking about Jesus. It was somebody at work that was talking about Jesus. It was somebody holding up a sign on the street corner talking about Jesus. I just, I just want to be in the crowd. So, when you know who he is, you won't allow 
a crowd to stop you, listen, or dirt to stop you from getting to him either. I added something to it. Crowd and dirt. I'm going to say it again. Crowd and dirt. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm finna show you. Hold on. Stay there. Because she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, she couldn't touch it if she remained up here. You know how y'all do. She couldn't touch it if she remained standing up straight. But somehow she had to find herself down on bending knees just trying to touch the hem of his garment. But in the process of her getting on her knees, getting down, dirty. God Almighty. In the process of her getting down and dirt, y'all ain't feeling me yet. In the process of her getting down and dirt, she wasn't talking about fighting. She wasn't talking about putting up no dukes. She says, I'm going to get down and dirty because I need to be made. She says, she says, I got to get to this man's, I got to get to this man's hymn. While y'all all standing up high trying to get to him, I'm going to get down. I'm going to get down low. Lord, Jesus, y'all didn't hear that because y'all didn't go to shout. She says, while y'all remaining high, she says, I'm going to get down low is there anybody want to just get down low <laughs> look 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 she says meaning the bottom of his his robe the only way for her to touch the bottom of his garment was for her to hit the dirt hey man she says i got to go back to where i came She said, I got to go back to where I came from. She says, if I'm going to get what I need, I got to go. Y'all ain't, y'all. I thought y'all was Baptists. The only way for her to touch the bottom of his garment was for her knees to hit the dirt, meaning she was willing to get nasty. She was willing to get filthy. She was willing to get downright and dirty. Her faith was so big that she thought if she could just touch his clothes, she could, she would be healed or made whole. She says, I just want to touch, I just want to touch some length on it. I just want to touch, I just want to touch that string that's there. She says, she says, I want you want to touch the dirt that's dra that you dragging. That that I, I want to touch that. She says, I'm willing to do whatever I gotta do in order to be here. Is that anybody this morning that just want any part of him? It ain't got to be the best part of the road. It could just be the smallest part. She said, there's a fragrance about him. He has a fragrance on him. Matter of fact, he has some particles on his clothes that I need to get to. Because of what she was willing to do. Hear this today. Because of what she was willing to do. 
meaning beg, meaning plead, meaning ask, meaning get dirty. The text says in verse 29, immediately, because of what she was willing to do, immediately, y'all ain't shouting, because of what she was willing to do, immediately, some things happened, something happened, and then it caused a shift in her. Some stuff is not going to happen immediately until you are willing. The bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. You know when you've been freed because the suffering, the agony, the affliction, the torture, the torment, the discomfort, the soreness, the ache, the pain, the throbbing, the pricking, the sting, all goes away. Uh, I saw Sister Carter, Kenya, and Gavin going through all last week. And they were all laying up in beds, shivering, cold, cold not knowing if they was going to come through out of it or not. Let me rephrase that. They didn't know when they was going to come through and out of it. But I watched. I watched with my mask on. Strapped up. I watched. And here it is on this day. They show up to the sanctuary. But I heard one morning, just before Kenya was going to work, she begins to pray. And while praying, she just mentions the word COVID. And I heard her holler, Father, just have thine own way. And I heard that shift go all over the room. And what happened the very next day, I began to watch them all just move around the house. And that's what happens when you are on one accord. That's what happens when you're willing to get down on bending knees. A shift will. Shift will take place. It is in Chronicles 20 and 17. Watch this. It says you will need to position yourself. For your breakthrough. Y'all ain't heard me, Main Street. Look it up. Google it. Chronicles 20 and 17 says, You will need to position yourself for a breakthrough. What is it saying? Quit pondering the past. Y'all ain't feeling me. It says, Quit pondering the past. What if this girl, what if this woman kept looking at the doctors and what they couldn't do? But she says, I'm going to look at the now. I'm going to look at who's in my presence. She's in the face of Jesus. She's in the presence of Jesus. So she can't look back. She can't look at what was going on back then, who didn't help her back then, all the money that she wasted back then. The only thing she could do was look. Hold on. Hold on, because it's going to get real good here in a second. This woman had to quit thinking about all the many doctors she tried and fixed her eyes on who was in her present or who was in her midst. Here's my question to you on this day. Who are you fixed on? Who do you have your eyes fixed on? Hold on. Here's the last final point because y'all feel like y'all ready to shout. I'm ready to shout. Here's the third point. This is the third and final point. 30 through 34. 
this finna kill you. <laughs> I gotta walk away from you. This, this gonna hurt y'all. Watch this, check this out. Y'all ready for it? Nikki, you ready? Watch this. Don't lie, but tell the truth. Yeah. Let me pause. Let me slow down. Put that thing in reverse. Bag it back and relax on it. Don't lie, but tell the truth. Y'all going to leave here today. Y'all ain't remember no other part of the sermon, but you remember this part of the sermon. Don't lie, but tell the truth. <laughs> That's all you got to tell them. They ain't going to know what you're talking about. But you just tell them, don't lie, don't tell them. Just tell the truth. Watch this. Jesus feels power leave him. And the text says he turned, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? So let me help all of y'all today. He had to stop in order to turn around in the crowd because he paused or stopped. Listen, this leads me to believe with using my Holy Ghost imagination that she withdrew a great deal of power from the source. And what happens when you draw a great deal of power from a source, you tend, or what tends to happen Let's just use our electronic devices. When we plug them into a power source, the phone just automatically go to blinking. It goes to creating a shift. The light comes on because it's now, it's connected to the source and because the source is so strong, it fills the phone's battery up. Tell somebody she got a fill up. And the source knew that it was coming from him. Hold on. It, is get, it gets a little bit better. She needed so much of him, it caused him to pause. Alicia, come here. She didn't know she was getting on camera. Alicia is the woman. Alicia says, man... I've been having this issue for a long time. And because I've been having this issue for a long time, I done went to everybody, I went to my husband, Pat, and I just still ain't got what I needed. But my partners, my friends, my homegirl, my homeboy, they been telling me I need to go and holler at this man named Jesus. And because he has what I need. Well, Alicia shows up. But on the day that Alicia shows up, there is a crowd. Alicia says, forget the crowd, I'm plugging in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm breaking it down for somebody online. I'm plugging in because I've heard that this man got it going on. I heard that this man healed sick. I heard this man raised the dead. I heard this man fed 5,000 with two fish, five barley, loaves of bread. I heard all about this stuff about this man. It can't be true, but I'm going to plug in anyway. Can I tell somebody to plug in anyway? Come on. Come on, just plug in anyway. Tune everything else out and go ahead and plug in anyway. Alicia says, when I plugged in, something just got a hold of me. Something made me feel better. Something gave my feet feel light. My stomach started moving. I felt a shift taking place all over from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. She says, I found out something new was going on within me. She says, I just believe it was, oh, I've been healed. So Alicia says, you know what? Jesus pauses and says, who touched me? It's Alicia. It's Alicia. Who touched me? 
he turns around while his smart aleck disciples was saying in the midst of him trying to find out who touched him the smart Alex, the disciples, the ones that's been walking with him, the ones that know his love language, the ones that's been telling him, Jesus, you the man, you the man. But why are you worrying about who is this to touch you, man? You see all these folks around you? He says, I'm worried about that one. The Bible does say go and get that, leave the 99 and go and get that. Alicia is that, that one. But hold on, what happens is, while Alicia has done what she's done, she's gotten what she's needed, Jesus says, who touched me? Alicia gets bold. She steps, <laughs> Alicia gets bold. She steps, <laughs> she steps back into the crowd. Y'all are tripping in Ninth Street. She steps back in, she steps back into the crowd and she says, here I am, I'm the one. She tells the truth. She says, I'm the reason why you feel, feel the way that you feel. But she says, in the process of you feeling the way that you feel, I feel better. There ought to be somebody shout this morning. You ought to feel better because of what the touch that you have, the person that you have touched. And I need to ask about five of y'all, when was the last time you've touched this man by the name of Jesus? When was the last time you touched Mary's baby? When was the last time you touched the seed of Abraham? When was the last time you touched the hue out on the mountain? When was the last time you touched that meek and humble lamb? What is his name? What is his name? What is his name? Nails in his hand. Nails in his feet. Spear in his side. Crown of thorns on his head. What is his name? What is his name? My alpha and omega. My beginning and the end. My will in the middle of a will. My food when I'm hungry. My shelter in a time of storm. His name is Jesus. 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 Lily of the valley. Bright and morning star. Jesus, I, I know it's all right. Wow, the blood is standing warm in your veins. The doors of the church are open, bleeding, broke, but still believing, bleeding, broke, but still believing, bleeding, broke, but still believing. And I just believe there's somebody that still believes, that still believes. Do you still believe? Do you still believe? Do you still believe? Do you still believe? Ah, I still believe. You can come. Come right now. The Lord is waiting on you. The Lord is waiting on you. The Lord is here to receive you. Don't worry about who's looking. Come on. Come on. If you still believe, just come on. Come walking down the aisles. Come on. Young man, young woman, come on. You can walk down the aisles. Come on. You can sign your name on the book. Come on. You still believe. 
Amen. While believers are praying, while believers are praying, while believers are praying, I'm going to pray a prayer of confession. While believers are praying, God, I pray you see us for who we are. Thank you for not giving up on us because we still believe that you are the author and you are the finisher of our faith. And besides you, there is none other. We still believe that you're looking from heaven above and you're calling us by name. You still have your hand on us and we are grateful, God. Thank you for loving on us. Thank you for caring for us the way that you do. When we don't even seem to care about ourselves, you care and you decide to wake us up each and every day knowing that we are not the best people, but you readily equip us for life's trials and life's journey. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody together said, Amen. God bless you. Can you put your hands together? Amen. Let's put our blessed hands together as someone makes a decision to come. Amen. Come on, keep clapping. Come on, keep clapping. All over this building, you ought to be clapping. Amen. Y'all know that we come this far by faith. Come on, say we come this far by faith. We come this far by faith. Lord, leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. Come on, he never fails. He never failed me yet. Say, oh, 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 can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Listen, listen. If you've been blessed by this service on this day, I just want you to put your hands together if you've been blessed by this service on today. Amen. Those of you online, you can give your emojis. Amen. If you've been blessed. Amen. Listen, it is giving time. It is giving time. And I want you to be just excited about giving uh, as you were about the sermon. So please, let's get our, our finances together and let's share and give back to what, what God has given to us. Before we leave this place, I want you to know that the cash app is being posted right now. Toddly is being posted. Amen. You all not want to leave this service while in online and not give your very best offering. Amen. Amen. Don't leave this channel without giving God what he has given to you. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer for you. Amen. While you are gathering your finances, I'm going to ask that you would stand so that we can depart this place. Amen. Next Sunday is the first Sunday. Amen. I have a hot sermon that I am wanting to get off the press and give it to you. I want to tell you to invite somebody to church for communion services on next Sunday. I got a good sermon that I want to release in your spirit. Amen. If you have not gotten the book, if you have not gotten the book, listen, if you need help in purchasing the book, I want everybody to have it. Have the book. Please get the book. I need you to get 
the book. We're going to post it online. And if somebody can right now, just go ahead and type that into the comment section online, the name of the book, or Autopsy of a Deceased Church. I need everybody to be online. Listen, tomorrow we're going to uh, begin talking about the questions that you had before uh, about the book. We're going to talk about that tomorrow for Message Monday and then on Wednesday, Tuesday, on Wednesday, we only have one Bible study until we complete this book. Only one. No women Bible study. It's one Bible study on an autopsy of a deceased church. Amen. I need everybody to get the book. If you don't get the book, get it online. But whatever you do, do yourself some justice and read this. I need musicians. I need every leader. I need every person that's a member or affiliated with this church to get that book, Autopsy of a Deceased Church. Amen. Somebody type that in for me. Amen. Amen. And we're going to begin discussing it on Monday. Now, let us all stand. Amen. Listen, don't forget the fourth Sunday, Reverend Garner is going to be back and he's going to preach uh, on the fourth Sunday in February. And we want to make sure we are here to support Reverend Garner. Amen. And we want to be kind to him. We want to show him uh, just as much, as much grace, as much mercy as much applause and celebrate with him as we can as this will be his first time in returning in over a year and a half two years that he, since he's been here and being our youth pastor amen so we look to hear from him on the fourth Sunday let us all stand amen y'all pray for me I'm just running out of breath Jesus amen I gotta get in shape amen Listen, as we prepare to leave this place, I need you to pray for every family that is simply going through the outlets, the Sharps, amen. Sister Charlotte Titwell, amen. Sister Dorothy Johnson family, amen. We are praying for everybody that's on our list. Please pray for these families, amen, who are simply going through their times of bereavement, but also health conditions. Charlie Cole, every senior member of this church, we want to pray for them, amen. We are in prayer for our members to come back to this sanctuary, amen, to this house of worship one more time. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, Lord, how we thank you. God, we thank you for another day, another opportunity, God, to stand before you. And now, God, that this is the end of this service. And God, we are appreciative of what you have blessed us with to receive by way of your word. Now, Father, I need you to get into our cars with us. Help us drive the cars home and then walk us into our various destinations. Once we walk can, Father, allow us to see everything has still just the way that we left it. Now, God, on this week, this week, God, allow this to be the best week of the rest of our lives, God. No hurt, harm, or danger come to any of us, but Lord, we're going to still praise and worship you in spirit and in truth. Allow us to make it back to this sanctuary once again, God, and we'll tell you thank you once more. It is in Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people said together, amen. God bless you, and love you in the Lord.